So I was just working on a solar cooker here and I was trying to line this up with the sun trying to figure out focal lengths and stuff like that. And I realized I needed a way to actually find uh, where the sun was, at, uh, what direction it is. And I, I had this piece of junk uh, sitting around, it's something I used for an <clears throat> electrical application. And it's uh, basically four pieces of plastic here with holes in it. And I lined up on a piece of board and just plastic hot glued onto the board. And I noticed that if I, um, if I move it around, what I do is try to get the sun to go through all the holes. If I can do that, then this would be pointing directly at the sun. As you can see, it's actually... There we go, fairly simple to do. So what I'm going to do is um, use this basic idea and make a sun finder or solar finder with it. So this is the plastic I'm going to use in order to make these pieces. I have some thick plastic right here and some thinner plastic. Uh, these I got from a hobby shop. The reason I want to use this thin plastic is so that I can see it from behind. You can get um, plastic any place. I mean, here's a lid from a jar, for example. So there's all kinds of places to get plastic. The reason I want to use plastic is because it's weatherproof. So to start with, I will draw my piece here and then cut it out afterwards. Now I need to find the middle for where I'm going to put the hole. So to find the middle of a square is very, or even a rectangle is very easy. Simply go corner to corner, draw a line, and there's the middle. I'll use this one as a, a mold, as a, sort of a mold for the other ones, a guide, a template. Uh, now to cut plastic very easy, <laughs> I use tin snips. There we go. So I'm ready to, uh, uh, to make the hole for the plastic, what I do is I take my X-Acto knife, make sure you've got a good blade on it. It doesn't have to be brand new, but it sure helps and saves a lot of time if it's not blunt. And of course be careful with your fingers. Yeah, that's a useful hole size. So next I'll take my thin plastic and I'll trace that out on it. Let's see, I don't want to waste materials, so I'm going to use this piece here. There you go, now that thin plastic, I can cut that with the scissors. Actually, I'm going to make the hole first. If I cut this out first, then I'll have trouble holding on to it while I make the hole. So, there we go. Now, I have a problem. There'll be no problem when I put this on. And if I hot glue that on, it's fairly rigid, but this one is fairly flimsy. So, what I'm going to do is make another piece like this that I'll glue onto here, but it'll just be a frame for the outline, and that'll give it some stiffness. So I'll get my thick stuff out again. Not sure. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the same trick. Since I just want to draw an outline, uh, if I were to cut this out again, it would be hard to hold while I cut the inside part. So I'm just going to draw where I'm going to put the inside part, where I'm going to make the cut for the inside part. A rough frame. That. And the next part's going to take a little while, and that's to cut this out. I can't use a tin snips because it's on the inside. So I'm going to have to do this sort of thing. And it's going to take a, basically just keep going at it like this, over and over and over until you can see it on the other side, and you can usually just push it out. Okay, five minutes later, getting there. Very careful, I don't want to break it and ruin all this work. And voila!
Okay, and cut the outside. There we go. I have all my pieces now. So the next step is to um, glue the flimsy piece to the frame here. Okay, the glue I'm going to use is uh, crazy glue. This stuff right here it doesn't really matter as long as it's you know for plastics. This one says it's for plastics. So that's good. Now this one is a little bit creative. I'm going to open the top here, but the uh, fact is, if I recall correctly, it comes out <laughs> somewhere around here. So it doesn't matter. As long as it comes out. Oh, there it is. Should have gloves on really for this, but I'll just clean my hands off with sandpaper later. Okay, that's good enough. Take my piece. Put it on in place. Hold it down. There we have it. That's nice and stiff. Oh, yeah, it's good. Works perfectly. Okay, next trick is get the hot glue out and put them on. Okay, so I have my handy uh, glue gun here. Wonderful thing. So I'm just going to put that one on the, oh, close to the edge. It doesn't have to be exactly at the edge. The more hot glue you put on there, as if you have a big bundle, the longer it takes to cool. And I put a big bundle on the front here, so it takes a little while for that to cool. Okay, to test it, I have this uh, book here, which I put on the floor, and I have the shadow, which is on lying, running across my floor too. It's coming from a window. So what I do is I put the um, the sun finder on the edge of the book. That's just so that I don't um, have it twisted like this. So that way I can just move it up and down. Now I line up the book with the edge of the shadow, separated from it a bit. And then I take the sun finder and put it such that the right edge of the sun finder is lined up with the shadow below it. And then I simply lift it up and see if, the, uh, if it meets the hole. Which as you can see it does pretty good. It's a little bit off to this side, but not too much. Not, not so much that I worry about it. Actually, if I try to line up better, it actually works better through the lens like this, uh, looking through a camera, than it does if I were to uh, look at it directly. The shadow is a little sharper this way. And so it looks good. So the next thing I'm going to do is just plunk some holes here for mounting it on various things and put some varnish on it uh, to uh, waterproof the, um, the wood. And there's the finished result, all nice and varnished. And uh, to mount it in this particular collector, what I've done is I have carved a hole right here. That's just the right shape for putting this into, in the corner. And uh, made a hole through there. I've also run some wire through two holes in the corner of the box. You can see it goes right there. And I simply slip this sun finder into the corner right there and tighten the wires. There we go. Right, so here it all is out on a um, partly, it's not bright sunny blue sky, but I can see a disc for the sun for sure. And just uh, showing you the adjustment right here works out quite well. All I've simply done was uh, put a box underneath the back on a picnic table and you can see that you can just up down and so on. It's a little getting the hang of it, but there we go. Now pointed directly at the sun. Here's what it looks like 10 minutes later from the back and from the front. So it's working very well.